for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a high nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Underdog is offering promos every day, all October, so make sure to use code MACE, CAM, or STAT to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash with your first deposit and get a Brock Purdy free pick. All you need is one yard for an easy W on your first cash entry. I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your hosts, MACE and CAM. Killer was good, man. I'm good, man. How you today, man? I'm doing good, man. That's what's up, man. Beautiful. Today, we are joined with our analyst, Michael Irvin. Mike, what's good, man? Man, it's all good, man. Another great week, man, heading into this week. And we got another great Thursday night game to start it off. So I'm looking good, man. Mm, you dressed up Ivy League again, Mike. Is this the new look? Yeah, I'm telling y'all, man, everywhere I go. You know how guys are, right? We determine what works by the compliments from the girls. You see what I'm saying? That's a fact. <laughs> that's a whole fact. That, that, that's an absolute fact. If I yep. put on some new cologne, right, and I, and, and, and five mother bros don't say, boy, that's so good. Oh, I come home and say, oh, you out. I'll never wear you again. Yeah. <laughs> no, you you absolutely so, right. Like, Mike, that's, a, that, that's what really inspired a lot of my pink shit. The pink Range Rover bitches <laughs> jump right in. I go to my house, I got an old pink room. They think, damn, you got a daughter? No, nah, that's for you. Pink pillows, pink wall, everything. Shit crazy, they like pink, man. So me and you are on the same page, man. We do what the females like. I like that, Mike, I like that, man. And, and they're, they're telling me, they said, man, I really like this one. Look at this one, look at these fans. I'll go with it. Oh, oh look boy. at my nigga, yo, Mike. Mike yo. <laughs> okay. Yo, Mike. Mike, what? what? I, it is Western cheek. I walked in like this right here. You know what I mean? I walked just like this. It, it was at Stephen Jones and Karen Jones' 60th birthday party tonight. Jerry Jones, all of them in there dressed like a cowboy. I said, shit, I am the cowboy. I'm coming in just like Mike. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Talk to him. Talk to him. Yo, Mike, is that your gaming chair that you sitting in or that's your son? Who, that, is that your actual gaming chair? Mike, there's that a lady a at the chair. window checking for you. <laughs> I can't hear your, your, your value went out. Is that your gaming chair? <laughs> no, no, not mine, actually. But That's dope. It's a no, fly I'm... chair, though. That's why I asked. Yeah, it's a fly chair. Don't get me in trouble. It's a fly chair. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even gonna ask no more what that's about. <laughs> I'm to take on this chair. Who has that chair in their house? Where was he? You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Oh, all right. All right. All right. My bad. My bad. In discreet location right now. <laughs> Cry a storm. Shh. Hey. I'm just messing around. Messing around. I don't want to problem with it and getting me up with it. I'm just messing around. All right. Bet. <laughs> Good to know for the clarification. Okay, so let's get started. After the firing of Jets coach Robert Sala, Aaron Rodgers was hit with a lot of the blame, saying that Aaron Rodgers didn't like him. He didn't hug him during the game. So when asked about it on the Pat McAfee show, he said, I resent any of those accusations because they're patently false. It's interesting the amount of power people think I have, which I don't. I love Robert, and it was one of those days yesterday. He then went on to thank Robert for his leadership. So, Mike, after hearing that, what did you think of Aaron Rodgers' response? And we discussed it a little bit yesterday, but what do you think of the firing of the head coach? Well, I appreciate Aaron Rodgers coming out saying he didn't have anything to do with it. But I also heard the owner say, yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't talk with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and, and I just find it hard to believe that 
nothing was discussed in, 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 in that direction at all. You know what I'm saying? And you can say what you want. We always talk about it. Perception is a person's reality. And, and, and that whole thing looked bad. I posted. I posted the other day when the Cowboys won. Did you see how crazy I was going? <laughs> how crazy? I mean, if you're in that kind of a moment, I would have hugged Satan himself. I was so excited. They won, won. De devil, we won devil. <laughs> you know, you hug anybody. If you, in, in that moment, if you still form somebody, you can't tell me ain't nothing between that. I, I can't. When I'm willing to hug the devil, you gonna still form your head coach. It ain't nothing. To, I, I I don't I don't it's believe that. In that. It was bad for coach. I thought it was horrible for Aaron Rodgers. And yeah, this comes later. So it's apropos. I resent that he says that he resents. Like, nigga, the fuck the <laughs> shit you talking about? I, don't, I feel, I'm resenting that. Yo, Aaron Rodgers, look, man. There's no way in Got the it. world. And Mike, Mike would know way better than me. This is pure speculation. This is pure me from the outside looking in. But I just agree with what Mike just said. And I said this, you know, we talked about this yesterday, Mike. There's no way in the world that you don't have anything to do with this. Now, I'm not saying you could get them fired just like that. But I agree with you, Mike. A conversation had to happen. There's no way that you're going to just throw somebody else in there who doesn't have matching personalities with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is in, a, is in a quiet taste. Like, for us, nobody necessarily wants to be dealing with Aaron Rodgers attitude, uh, the way he acts, if they're not going to win. If you're winning, sometimes you'll deal with people's attitude, be like, man, fuck it, it's all good, we win it. But when you're not winning, it's a problem. Um, so I resent him saying he resents it. Um, what, it. What It is what it is, it's all said and done. Homeboy's packed up and he's gone. But we also talked about uh, yesterday, Mike, his record as well. You know, he, he finished... 20 and 36. He finished fourth in division twice. It's only four teams in the division. He finished third in the third season, and he got fired this season. So you finished last in the division two times, second to last one time, and then they canned you this year. Uh, that didn't help. They said that, he, you know, he comes from a great reputation as a defensive coordinator, and, you know, a lot to do with defense uh, throughout his career when I was looking at his um, – well, through his tenure, through his whole tenure. So so to that side of the ball, he has stood tall. Right. But that's your defensive coordinator. That's great. But when you're the head coach, you're, re you're responsible for it all. Exactly. And, and that offense has not been good. And that's been the problem. Yeah, and, and what I'm saying is this, is being that he was so good on defense, they were thinking that Aaron Rodgers was going to come in here and save the day. Now, last year, Aaron Rodgers got hurt four minutes into the season and was out for the season. This season doesn't look like it's starting off good. It looked like it could have went good when it was 2-1. and one. Then they fall two games in a row, so now it's not looking good. But at the end of the day, they didn't give this, this thing a chance. But Aaron Rodgers can't fix the Jets situation, a uh, 53-year situation, a 54, 55-year situation. I'm talking about as far as winning the championship. In two minutes, it's just not going to happen that quick. I really believe Aaron Rodgers didn't care for him. I like the phrase that you said. He stiff-armed the nigga and said, I'm good. And that speaks volumes. But it is what it is. Nothing you could talk about. But I resent Aaron Rodgers saying that he resents anything. You're throwing out the resent. Man, and I, I, I resent something, too. You know, let me tell you what I resent. Go ahead. Say it. <laughs> really, honestly, I resent... And Aaron Rodgers is here saying that it's not his fault. Actually, it's all your fault. Hmm. It's all his fault. Let me tell you what I mean by this. The Jets last year and the year before that looked like a team that was just a quarterback away, right? We all said that. Hmm. Yeah, they're just a quarterback away. If you add a good quarterback to what they did and what they were doing, man, they can get the Super Bowl. Okay, so you added a good quarterback. But you didn't add a quarterback to what they were doing. Aaron Rodgers has come in 
And yes, you have taken over. He's throwing the ball 60 damn times a game. That's not that was not the Jets offense last year. They ran the ball and they played great defense because they had Zach Wilson. Now you come in, what happened to running the ball and playing great defense and adding Aaron Rodgers? See, Aaron Rodgers wants to come in and be the star. You did not not get added to anything, added to a game plan that's primarily running, added to a game plan that's willing to win with defense. They don't need the two, three-time MVP Aaron Rodgers. And get this, guys, that wasn't who Tampa got in Tom Brady, and even older longer than that, that wasn't who Peyton Manning was when he went to Denver. He went there to become the, 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 the stabilizer. Because they were running the ball. Peyton threw it for a lot of yards that first year, but the year they won the Super Bowl, you know, he, he didn't throw for a lot of yards. He managed. That's the problem Aaron Rodgers has. You ain't the three-time, four-time MVP anymore. You are a manager. Get your butt to managing, and y'all can win some games. Stop trying to be the star and tell Green Bay, I should have told you. I told you, I told you. No, you're in New York. Hand the damn ball off now and let the team play defense and don't you mess it up. Mike, if he's a four-time MVP and and he ends up in New York, you think he's going to go to a bigger city to take a smaller role? He want to shine the most in the New York City area, you don't think? Right. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. It's his chance to tell little old bitty Green Bay. Y'all messed up, but it ain't working quite like that. <laughs> you really and you know, another thing, he, you you were 100% right about him being a part of the coach, you know, the coach's demise, because just a few weeks ago, it probably was two weeks or one week ago, him and the coach was sitting down and he was telling the coach he apologized for how he was playing. So his his performance definitely led to his um to his departure. So what do you think about that when a when a player is playing so so horrible that it causes the coach to get fired? Correct, because they, they, they can't. They're not going to get rid of Aaron Rodgers. And and when, when the owners are seeing this, guys, they're they're saying, okay, we're we're trying to talk Aaron Rodgers into staying another year, right? That that's that's the way they're working on it. We got to talk him into staying another year. And and because what he said, the, the owner said, this is the best team we ever had. We, we, we need to make sure we got to get more out of this team. And the only way we're going to have a chance of keeping them another year is getting rid of that fella. I, hey, I'd rather he tells me or not, I just feel like he wants me to get rid of that fella. And, and, and that's what they did. So, yeah, he had something to do with it. I just think Aaron Rodgers has a problem taking accountability for anything that goes wrong. Even the last play of last week's game, when he threw that interception, it was a terrible pass. Uh, they was calling timeouts when they was uh, when they was uh, making a drive to try to win the game. He wasn't communicating with the coaches on the sideline. But the last pass, uh, and I forget who he was targeting, but it was in double coverage, and it got intercepted. Aaron Rodgers actually walked over to the referee and flipped out and said, where's the pass interference call? <laughs> and started bugging like, yo, you were supposed to call pass interference, yo. What's happening? Aaron Rodgers is way down the field throwing the ball and going to tell the referee who's right there. Now, we all know referees miss calls, and we understand that. That's part of the game. But you're down there and won't take accountability for the interception and blame the shit on the referee. You have to take accountability sometime, Aaron Rodgers. And you tried to do it in a press conference post-game. But it seemed like you still didn't do it. Only thing you took accountability for was, hey, I threw, threw two interceptions in the first quarter. That ain't really like me. That's all. That's, that's all you had to say, nigga. You wilding. I think he has a problem owning up to things because people have been telling him that he's been the best quarterback in football ever a lot of times. And I know that they say Tom Brady's the greatest because of his Super Bowl titles. But you have people before Patrick Mahomes came around and Lamar Jackson and, so, and the new wave of quarterbacks will say that Tom Brady is not as good as Aaron Rodgers. It's just that Tom Brady has the championships. And I think Aaron Rodgers thinks that as well. Now, whether that's true or not, that's a debate for people to debate about. But I really believe in his arrogance. That's what he thinks, Mike. 
right? And, 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 and I would concur with him if that's his conclusion. I do think you have more physical gifts than Tom Brady. I saw Tom Brady coming out at the combine. And it didn't look like one physical gift was in that body, not just a one, you know? <laughs> I saw their body, you know, but but in this game, it's not just about your physical gifts. It's also about your way to assess the game. And more importantly, in this situation, which I think is the key factor, is your ability to lead, your ability to come in and make a team feel like you're a part of the team or are you above the team? How do you go in and address the team? When Tom Brady went to Tampa, became a part of our team. Each one called each one of those guys, talked with those guys on a personal level. Same thing with Peyton Manning. So yeah, you have that physical capability of those guys, but I don't know that you had the leadership and the personable, the personable man, uh, personality like those guys, man. And, and that makes a huge difference, especially when you're going from one place and you're the one coming to a new team that team should feel like they have to submit and commit and learn you. You should be the one saying, hey, guys, I'm trying to make sure I learn all of you guys and galvanize that team. Okay. So it is now week six, and, Mike, you actually caught up to Mace. You guys are tied for you guys' predictions. So I'm still keeping track. We're going to keep track till the end of the season, just so everybody is aware. And those last five, those last four that I got wrong, it was just me going along with, <laughs> with what um, Killer said. But I'm not blaming nobody. I'm not doing Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. But wait, wait, I was wait, like, wait, it. Wait, yeah, like what? <laughs> I'm not blaming anybody, but like, yeah, you, your picks is why my picks. Not, <laughs> like, bro, what? you pick first. How you going along with me? Yet, yet you go first, so you can't be going along with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, we yeah. asked you who your pick is first. So how is you going along with me? It's crazy. I'm deflecting. Sounds <laughs> 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 like Aaron Rodgers. I'm going with Mike's pick. <laughs> But, okay, so let's start with tonight. The 49ers will play the Seahawks. The Seahawks remain first in the division while the 49ers are third. Mike, who do you believe will win this game? Desperation on both sides and has to play such a key part in this game right here. You know, I, I, I think the 49ers have to win this game on the road. Here's why I said desperation, desperation plays such a vital part. You talk about going to lose two games in Seattle back to back and that crazy crowd there, those guys are going to be playing out of their minds. But I believe San Francisco, I thought last week, San Fran, even though we had all the injuries, would start really getting it together. I, I, I say this week, they're 2 3 and Seattle 3 2. They'll try to even this thing up at 3 and 3 for both teams. Nah, Mike, this is where I get the lead back right here. Seattle is winning this game. There's no way they're letting a, a whimpering, um, weak 49er team come in Seattle and get the win, especially, I mean, Seattle is even better in offense than, than the 49ers. So how do you let a team that's not as good as you, even in offense, beat you at home? That's not going to happen. I think I think uh, you're right, Mike. I'm not agreeing with you on the pick, but this is a desperation game to me, not just for the 49ers, but for both teams because Seattle started off so good this year and it was looking like, wow, okay. Okay, they, Gino and them, okay. They might be, you know, that motherfucking niggas might be all right. That's what it was looking like. And then you get these two losses back to back and you're like, yeah, that's that's the Seattle Seahawks. But I have to agree with Mace because it's in Seattle. Like you and you yeah. just said it, Mike. That may be the loudest stadium in the NFL. It may be. They they <laughs> they're called the twelfth man, the fact the fans actually in the crowd. They're actually called the twelfth man. And um right now Seattle's still leading the division. I think they want to hang on to the division. So 
uh, the lead in the division, I should say. So I'm actually going to go with Mace and pick the Seattle Seahawks because I don't think it's just desperation on the 49ers side. I think that it's desperation also on the Seahawks side to try and get a bigger lead in the division. Okay, good takes. And then we also got another good matchup. So the Commanders versus the Ravens, Lamar Jackson versus Jaden Daniels, which will say the new hotness, Mike. The new hotness. Who do you think? It's true, though. That's facts. That's <laughs> a fact. This is going to win this. <laughs> Mike, who do you think nah. is winning? <laughs> Great matchup, man. And, 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 and I love that matchup with Lamar Jackson and Jaden Daniels because I'm telling you right now, Jaden Daniels look as polished as Lamar Jackson right now, and he's just starting in the league. Uh, what worries me is the back end of Washington. The back end of Washington giving up more opportunity, more yards, passes, two wide receivers than any team in the National, in, in National Football League. So I'm going to take Baltimore to win this game, but, but I, boy, I can't wait to see that matchup. And the matchup between those two quarterbacks is really going to determine this game. I got Baltimore winning it, but it's going to be close. Yeah, I think I think I agree with that. Baltimore will win this. It'll be a close game. I think it'll be a high scoring close game though, not not a low scoring game. And it's really going to be, you know, who can who can create those turnovers. Whoever um can keep their their turnovers to a minimum, that's the team going to win. Whoever has the less mistakes cuz I think both of these um quarterbacks are playing phenomenally well. Both of them are very confident. The team is they got the full support, but it boils down to can you take it of um the football? Hmm. This is tough. My problem is this, I would say Baltimore to answer the question, I'm going to go with the Commanders. Um, and that may may not be a popular pick, but let me tell you my reasoning behind this. It's because Baltimore's defense is suffering for some reason. I'm not sure why that the, the Cowboys could co- score 19 points in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. or another team could sit and score 30-something points on them. And – they're known for their defense. We won't get into a bunch of that because we talked about it earlier this week. And one thing for sure, two things for certain is that, I'm sorry, I don't know if this is if this is left. And what I've seen with Washington is they don't get rattled. And what I mean is they don't get rattled is that they were down to the Cincinnati Bengals and, and Jaden held his motherfucking cool Third down, whatever the however many yards it was, they drew they dialed that shit up and threw a touchdown with less than two minutes left and put the Bengals to sleep. Um, I don't think that they're rattled. I think that you said this earlier a couple weeks ago, Mike, that they're actually having fun. If they do lose, I don't think that uh they're gonna be upset about it, even though they wanna win. But right now, to me, Washington is kind of playing with house money. And when I say they're playing with house money, Nobody expected them to be leading the division right now. Nobody expected them to be playing as good as they're playing right now. So if they lose to the Baltimore Ravens, that's what people were expecting when they uh, made the schedule before the season up. Now the season is five weeks in, and we're saying, well, maybe they might just could beat the um, Ravens. But to me, honestly, the Ravens have picked up, offensively at least, their stride this season. Derrick Henry's playing good. Uh, Jackson's playing good. Their receivers, they flowers. Everybody is playing really good. I know it's not a popular answer to pick the commanders, which I am going to pick, but I do think that Baltimore has hit their stride offensively. And we'll see. This is probably my favorite game coming up this week. Yeah, and, and these teams and these teams are one and two when it comes to rushing. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's as close as a close game could be. Whoever gets slowed down is going to um, get the victory. I mean, whoever will slow the other team down. Yeah. And then, Mike, did you have a point before I continue? Well, I was, you talked about that. You, you talked about the rushing. Washington is, they, they struggle. They are even worse than Dallas at stopping the run. And you saw what he did against Dallas, you know. And so so I'm expecting Baltimore to really be able to, to, to get take advantage of the run game. But the thing is, Jane Daniels, and that offense has been putting up plus 30 points every game, every game. 
Baltimore's only averaging 29. They're right up under them. So you, it, most teams, they can take out of the run game by putting up points early. Baltimore be right there. That's why I say, like you said, Mace, it'll be a high scoring game, but it will still be a close game. Yeah. Okay. And then this next game is going to be a two part question, but we'll start with this. So, in the Saints' loss to the Chiefs, Derek Carr got an oblique injury and is expected to miss multiple weeks. Saints made the decision to start their fifth round draft pick, Spencer Rattler, giving him his NFL debut versus the Bucks. So first, Mike, what's your impression of Spencer Rattler? And then how do you think they'll perform against the Bucks? Man, this is this is, this is interesting because, you know, I remember when the Saints came and played the Cowboys, I said, man, can they do that all year? <laughs> I mean, you know, the boy ran back, ran like he was a, a wild man. Derek Carr dropped every pass in there perfectly, perfectly perfectly and i knew they couldn't keep it up i couldn't keep it up couldn't throw that many perfect plays made that many perfect plays i'm, I'm interested to see what the young kid does against this defense and coming off what tampa just came off of and, and this is going to be a, a very good game for tampa i'm thinking tampa bay will win this game because of that young quarterback and what they're going to do to confuse them i don't know that nigga. You could go ahead. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> five years down there in um in college. Another one of those guys got an extra year, you know. Got um <laughs> well, <laughs> Mike your, left that out. Yeah, well give your prediction and then I'll explain a little bit more. Because it is an interesting story and I'll explain uh, it. All second. right, yeah. okay. All right. So I'm going with the Bucks as well. See this how I messed my record up. Going with Mike. Yeah, I'm going with I'm going with Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay is looking really good this season, and uh, they don't got Derek Carr. I don't know the story about with the backup pick. I don't know. I don't really know nothing about it. I ain't gonna say him pump fake like I did when I seen we was talking about this earlier. I seen his name, and I'm like, I'm not even gonna do no homework on this shit. If y'all niggas want to talk about that, that's on y'all niggas. I ain't really got time for all that. Where's the nigga at that they play quarterback and play all type of positions? They got a fucking nigga. I forget the nigga name on the Saints. He a quarterback, special teams. It was, yeah, what the fuck is he at? Ain't he play quarterback no more? With that? He hurt. Oh, he hurt? Yeah, Taysom Hill and all that. He's supposed to be a Swiss Army knife. A nigga could do everything. For I ain't seen the nigga since Drew Brees was out. I don't know where this, I don't know what the fuck going on with that. I don't know. Okay, so let me explain a little bit here. So Spencer Rattler, when he was in high school, he was a very top prospect, right? So then he started at Oklahoma and lost his starting position to Caleb Williams. So then after he transferred to South Carolina and played there. So the interesting about his, interesting thing about his story is that he actually was on the reality show QB1. But his image on QB1, people didn't feel like it was the best. They didn't like his attitude and personality. Even um, in Rappaport, he said, it didn't make him look great. And it is unbelievable how many different teams mentioned to me the image of him in that show and how they can't get it out of their heads, which I think would be a public service announcement to all 17-year-olds. So basically, obviously, when this draft came around, his draft stock declined a lot, mainly based off of his personality, even though he was performing a lot better at South Carolina as opposed to Oklahoma. So the second part of this question is obviously we're going to see his NFL debut when he plays versus the Bucks. but what is your opinion Mike I'm going to ask you first on younger athletes joining reality shows like QB1 to because to hear that all these teams kind of started shifting the image that they had on him based on his performance on that show what's your opinion on them joining joining shows like that if, if you are in this kind of a profession like I you know I I I yeah I I would try to stay away from that now because because you guys know you guys know all of those reality shows the best thing for reality shows is mess that's yeah. what make people tune in drama. mess drama so if you are see and the producers they're trying to even find ways to produce mess drama. You know what I'm saying? So how is that good for you? When, when, okay, I'm a quarterback. I'm going out here. I know everybody's going to be judging and measuring me when I get to the league and all of these things. Every little thing they're looking for. I I, I would be very skeptical of doing any shows like that. And I was skeptical of any agent that let any client that, that, is, that is, has good opportunity do anything like that without telling him, 
I, I don't think that's a good idea. Not in that situation. It's not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the best possible outcome for everything that he's up against and everything that he's been through to go through all of the things that St I just shared, everything you're talking about, and then to land right here on week six, I believe, and as a starting quarterback for the Saints. That's the best outcome he could have possibly ever came across. What you say, he's on a reality show? It was QB1. QB1. You know how they follow like people from high school? Yeah. So they didn't really like it. Looked like they was trying to trash his name. You know, like when somebody got it out for you and they're trying to paint you out to be this head case, pause, and, and this this troubled person. And I mean, to to like I said, to end up being the starting quarterback at week six is great. He couldn't ask for anything does, better. And if he does something great, good, then he, he got a future. Right. Because then all the dirt that people tried to bury you with that threw on your grave be the dirt that you stand on and say, aha, uh -huh, jokers, look at me now. But you first got to get out there and perform so you can stand on that dirt and say, aha, uh -huh, jokers, look at me now. Because if you don't perform, they going to say, aha, right, Joe, get your butt in that casket. Let us finish putting this dirt on you. You see what I mean? Because you're done. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, you got to complete that cycle with a good performance. I don't have enough knowledge to comment on this. <laughs> Fair point. Not that an answer. We'll probably discuss it later down the line because we'll see how he performs versus the Bucks. But it should be. What do you be think, Stat? You think he'll play well? Um. You seen his? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, it's the Bucks. Like Baker Mayfield has been performing super well, so it's kind of hard to go against the Bucks right now. But it's not like he's a bad player. I just feel like it was an unfortunate situation. So seeing that. Based off of his personality, that's how he was portrayed, and it kind of shifted his draft stock as well. I just feel like maybe you shouldn't do reality when you're so young, yeah. especially in sports. Kind of like you said, keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. We would love to see your person. Like I think TikTok is fine. Like on the basketball side, like Jared McCain, mm -hmm. he also paints his nails. He has been doing great on TikTok. People love his personality, but that's a different form rather than reality where they kind of skew how you're portrayed to other well, people. Well, what did you mean by it's the Bucks? Yeah, it's the Bucks. What what do you mean by that? Like Bucks versus Saints, like I just feel like for him this being his starting game, his NFL debut. I mean, I hope everybody has a great NFL debut, but I think it's going to be really hard against them. I think they're a pretty okay. solid team. He paints his nails this dude. No, Jared McCain. No, that that was my example. Spencer Rattler does not. Why did you even mention painting the nails? Because I knew if I said Jared McCain and that didn't click, and I said the guy that painted his nails, Man most people painting get nails, that. Though. But there's specific people. Like, he's one who has a Sally Hansen NIL, well, had the Sally Hansen NIL deal. What's that, fingernail polish? Yeah. <laughs> and he's on the Sixers uh, now. He was their um, draft pick. But, like, he everybody loves his personality. He gets so a lot niggas of is getting fingernail polish deals. I mean, he did, and Caleb Williams could be next. Lash deals too. Yeah. No. You're right. And Tovin. And the, the other ring. wide receiver at um <laughs> the other wide receiver paints his nails too. I for we'll get to it, but yeah. Okay. It's it's you didn't see the guy got a lash deal? Who? Because what what she meant. It's the Bucks in this sense. You talked about that com combination of Mayfield and Evans, and they're going off again this year, Mayfield to Godwin. That team puts up points. So these young guys, you ain't going to just be able to turn around and hand that ball off. You're gonna have, you will have to have a chance. You will have to throw this ball to keep up with the Bucks, And that means you'll have an opportunity to succeed and fail, like that baby was talking about. So it should be an interesting game, but I would go with the Bucks as well. Okay, we are going to go to break. When we return, we will discuss the Cowboys. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about us toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She's tired of hearing I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about she wanna be free. 
Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog picks of the day. Like I mentioned earlier, tonight the 49ers will play the Seahawks. Underdog has Brock Purdy at 250 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? I'm going lower, pause. Lower. Okay, Debo Samuels at 13 and a half rushing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? Higher. Higher. Okay, and Geno Smith is at 252 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Going higher. Higher. Okay, if you guys like these picks, everyone will receive a pregame and in-game profit boost token, and you always get a free pick if you're not already on Underdog. So make sure to support the show by signing up, and you can make your picks too. We are joined back with our analyst, Michael Irvin. So let's just get straight to it. On Sunday, the Lions will play the Cowboys. Mike, what is your prediction? (laughs) Mike, I hope you ain't going to be on the field. (laughs) <laughs> nah. oh, this, hey, like like I was with Miami the last couple of weeks, but this this will be this should be the game, really, because I, I need to be on the field because they, they 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 got something. Remember what happened last year over here, and Detroit's coming back in here, and they and their physical football team. I still think back and don't know how Dallas pulled that game out last week. We're playing it with winning that game in the last second. But the good things in that game were other guys stepping out and making plays. Those guys stepped out, but now they have to continue it and have a continuation. I got to see the Jalen Tobers and the Cavante Turpins really contribute to this football team if they got any chance at beating Detroit. I'm, I'm pulling and hoping and I'm a praying for the Cowboys, but if I had my money, I would probably bet with Detroit. Come on, Mike. You know, you know Detroit is gonna beat the Cowboys. The 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 Cowboys cannot stop the offense of the of the Lions. There's absolutely no way they're gonna be able to stop them. Right. They're scoring right. too great right now. Right. You're right. You're right. I ain't, and that's why, Mace. That's why, you know, you you, you, you you're good. You're good. That's why I said those other guys, the only chance Dallas has is in the track meet. It's in the track meet, really. Because you, you're not going to stop them. Now you got to make sure you run in with them and try to clip them in the end. Because the only chance you got. Detroit Detroit right now is a better team. And they're coming off a of bye week, Mike. So, I mean, they're definitely going to be looking for this game. And and not to not to mention that the Dallas is like the a, a, a bad team when it comes to the run. You know that we watched them play the last couple of weeks. They can't stop anybody. You know what it is, Mike. <laughs> Y'all niggas can't win at home. <laughs> Y'all ain't won at home this whole year, nigga. Y'all ain't gonna start this week. <laughs> It's a dub, nigga. Detroit. <laughs> you gotta get into detail. We'll get into detail when y'all win a home game. <laughs> Haven't won a home game you yet. Know what? Right there, can't can't can. So from your mouth to God, you just gave me hope. You absolutely right. These jokers around here, they have to have an Armageddon kind of situation before you can get the best oh out of their goodness, will. Mike. You need to and the reality is, you right. They was they ran off sixteen straight and haven't won yet in that stadium. I'm taking the Cowboys again. You just gave me. <laughs> Mike, you wild enough. They twenty fourth against the run, Mike. How how are they gonna win this game? What what is, what is the strategy you think is gonna help them to win the game? That's what I need right there because they, they remember now. If they're going in here now saying, man, we we are we going to win at home? It's going to bring something best out of them. They need to win right here at home to have any hopes of doing anything. This team only plays well in crisis mode for the team. Whenever the team feels comfortable, oh, my God, they play their worst game. So what you just said puts them in crisis mode. They need a home victory. This is crisis mode, and I think that's where to get it to us. Why sell? So are you going on the record and saying that that Elliot is going to have um Ezekiel Elliott is going to have a touchdown too? <laughs> <laughs> so hey. You're talking crazy. 
You gonna give him a touchdown? Talk about Alvin Kamara and Ezekiel Elliott. Alvin Kamara. Yo, yo, Mike, 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 Mike. Mike, This is this is a a Thursday morning. It is not Sunday morning, and you're not in church. This is not a crisis mode. If it is a crisis, you ain't got to do all this. It's just a regular crisis for the Cowboys because they wasn't at home. They haven't won at home. You so dramatic when it comes to the Cowboys, bro. I dig it, man. I dig it. You know, I never played for a professional team, or and I, and I played in junior college, but I never even played D1. I played junior college. But I love watching you when it comes to the University of Miami and the University, uh, I mean, and pardon me, the Dallas Cowboys, because my high school can't get me to go back there. They ain't do shit for me if they ain't retiring my jersey. I know you don't like retired jersey. I'm charging them niggas money to come back. I, I respect <laughs> that y'all, <laughs> that you love your school and your formal organization because I just, I don't get it. I would not, But I've never been a part of anything like that. I dig it. I, I, I've been blessed too, though. Honestly, God, because St. Thomas is... It is it's just one of the greatest places you can ever play high school football and, and you know, Coastal University of Miami and then the Dallas Cowboys. So, so yeah, I've been fortunate. Those are three great places, three great, great, well-known places, three great places that I personally built myself. <laughs> 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 my, <laughs> yeah. I'm not even mad at that. Hey, I don't like pop that shit. Uh, I don't like that. My, <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask you what I was gonna ask you now that you said that. Okay, so the Browns are currently one and four, and will play the Eagles if the Browns lose this game. Mike, does this affect anything at all for Deshaun Watson? What are we thinking? And then who do you think will win this game? Man, I, I, I'm taking the Eagles to win this game, but but I'm telling you guys, I am concerned about where this thing goes for Deshaun Watson. The Eagles are having problems, right? And and, and so if Cleveland comes somehow come, can come in some way and win a game here, and get everybody off of Sid Deshaun Watson, Sid Deshaun Watson, because so that's a chant that's going around and it's swelling. It's swelling. Sooner or later, you get enough swell, they got to just sit that $40 million and just eat it. You know what I mean? So so I I, I would love to see Deshaun wake the hell up against the Eagles and do something, anything like he did before. But I, 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 can't, I can't pick him. I got to take the Philadelphia Eagles and win in this game. But this is a crucial game. For, for Deshaun Watson, not, not, not the Cleveland Brown as it is. Each game is more crucial for Deshaun Watson and whatever career he has left. He'll have plenty of money, but he doesn't have plenty of more opportunities or career left if he doesn't turn it around. Yeah, I don't really know how to feel about this game because both of these teams are like, are definitely underperforming. When it comes to the, the Eagles, I thought the Eagles would have a better year by this point, and and I know they could get better as time goes on, but they stunk it up last year, you know, winning a lot of ugly games. This year it looked like they're going, they're off to do the same thing. And I don't I don't really, I don't know other than beating the Eagles, I mean beating the Browns, that they're going to have a good season. So I'm, I am picking them to beat the Browns, but who can't beat the Browns? I think anybody could beat the Browns right now. And with them, again, having a bye week, I'm looking for A.J. Brown to have a breakout game and, and to do his thing. But other than that, I, I probably won't even watch the game. I'll probably just get the stats off of ESPN or somewhere else. It's not worth my time. Like Killer said, there's, there's, these are hours I can't get back. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I mean, and I know I got people out there in Philly going to get mad at me. Don't send me any news because I'm not going to read it. I don't want to watch this game. I have to watch it to do my job. But other than that, I wouldn't watch y'all, you know. Y'all got to start playing, especially they got Saquon. I was all hyped up thinking Saquon is going to be there this year. And for what? For what?
Come on, Saquon. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Eagles as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's one of these weeks that the Browns end up winning. Uh, I don't care about the game just as much as Mace doesn't care about it, to be totally honest with you. Uh, two franchises that I don't think are going to finish off the season really well, just my personal opinion. But it's more about what Mike said for me. This is week to week us watching Deshaun Watson and what's going to happen with him. I think that's a bigger story than the actual game. Is he going to play good? Is he going to underperform? Are they going to end up sitting him? Is Jamin Winston going to come in? Are they going to trade him? If they do trade him, who wants to pick up that fucking $2 billion contract? Like, it's a fucking <laughs> mess with the Sean Watson week to fucking week. So I think that's the real story, what Mike just said. Bigger than the game. What is Deshaun Watson going to do? The only thing that I would disagree with Mike on is saying that his career would be over if he doesn't succeed with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, he could disappear for a year or two, maybe even three, be a backup quarterback and pop up in the right situation. To, t- to be totally honest with you, I had no idea where Geno Smith was at about three years ago yeah, or four Gino years Walton. ago. And I thought his career might actually be over and he found a great situation to where uh, he's performing at a high level. We're like, okay, okay, Gino, we thought you wasn't shit in the NFL. He's playing really, really good. So I don't think if Deshaun Watson feels in um, Cleveland that his career is over, but he may need a new look because if they're chanting Jamin, Jameis Winston, that's bad business because no yeah. disrespect to Jameis Winston, but Jameis Winston? That's who niggas is chanting? That's bad business, man. And Deshaun, guys, Deshaun was simply, he was under Patrick Mahomes. And, and, and I tell you why I say it's a crucial game, you know. Now, it's crucial for both teams, but certainly for Deshaun Watson personally, personally, because that rattle that you're talking about me is just getting louder and louder. And if I'm seeing a guy already struggling with confidence issues, and that rattle gets louder and louder, it affects him more. I hear what you're saying also, Cam, when we talk about what has happened when guys like Sam Dono and Geno Smith yes. said, get out of here, New York. The difference between the two is, and for some reason, I don't know why it is, it's more difficult when you have that success and have great confidence and then lose it to find it again, than it is mm-hmm. if you never had success and in, 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 in the league. Now another team comes and they're trying to build you up from that place. But when you had success and fall, it's a greater fall. And because and, and you, and you, you think you know, you think you know because you've been there already. You know what it takes. And sometimes you don't want to listen to people tell you how to get back because some of those people have never been to the level that you have been at, like Deshaun Watson. It's a hard thing once you lose, once you have that supreme confidence, lose it and trying to get it back. It's like people say, once you have money and lose it, it's supposed to be hard to get back. But, you know, I, 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 I'm not going through that lose it part. <laughs> Mike, who you think could actually um, get... Deshaun Watson back to that level. Because I heard you say that, but I, I don't know who you're talking about. Right. But it has to be. But in order, well, I just think you got to be with uh, uh, like a, a, a Kyle Shannon, one of those kind of coaches that knows how to just do what you do best and continue to add on to it. Because Everybody looks at what he used to be and they keep trying to implement to the greatness of him without starting back at the baby of him to rebuild that confidence that he once had, that supreme confidence that Dabo Sweeney once called the Michael Jordan of college football. Mm-hmm. It was him who started knocking down Alabama first over when he was at Clemson. He was that guy that made those plays and I look now I'm like, man, who is that dude right there? How do you get that dude back on top of that mountain? It's a hell of a battle. And you got to find small success along the way that, that, that he can feel, start feeling good about himself. I can't even imagine 
he's talking. I don't know. I, I can't imagine how he's sleeping at night with all of this. And I know people think, man, $240 million, I'll be sleeping just fine. Shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. That, you, that sounds good, but it, it ain't true. You know what I'm saying? It's just not true. But, you know, when you care about something and when you've been at the top of the mountain, you want to get back to the top of that mountain. So I know it's, it, 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 it has to be flustering him. Well, let me ask you this before we move on, Mike, and I don't know if Mace has something else to add. Yeah. And you're talking about the success that he had with the Texans, mm -hmm. and I understand that. Let me ask you this, and I'm just asking. I'm not being facetious when I ask this. Oh, do do the Browns have a receiver as good as DeAndre Hopkins? No. Oh, Mark Cooper can go. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, Mark Cooper. Can go. remember when Joe Flacco came in <laughs> last year? Amari went for like 180, 170, soon as the shot left the field. So right. it, 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 the date this year, when 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 I, I told you guys earlier, I saw Amari Cooper run a route and that ball was behind him. And it's one thing to try to reach around and catch that ball. It's another thing where you just just kind of bat it down behind you like, I'm sick of this shit. I'm tired <laughs> of these balls behind <laughs> what I, You know what I'm he was like, oh, I didn't that. And I said to myself, oh, the frustration is coming out of the receivers, you know, and you see that. That's why I say he has to have some success, some kind of good fortune to turn that thing around because they're losing confidence in him every snap. It's, it, it's, it's bad to watch. It's hard to watch. Yeah, I really, I really believe the coach down there, um, Kevin, Coach Kevin down there at um, the Browns, got to just sacrifice a game. Like, really sacrifice a game, put the ball in his hand, and tell him to just play. Have fun. And, and with no, with no, with no um, discrepancy about what he does, because I think that's going to give him the momentum to be able to play better moving forward. But every game, it seemed like there's more pressure being um, surmounted onto him when he's already dealing with these allegations and stuff outside of the game. So I think the best thing to do is to sacrifice a game and just let him go out there and play. And then from there, he'll find his way. I think that's a great take. But at the same time, if you think it's the pressure on Deshaun Watson, imagine the pressure that's on him as well. Yeah. See, just happened with the Jets, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I really believe that they got to um, they gotta give him a shot, though, you know? I, I hear what, Killer, what you're saying, Killer, but no, I mean, he might get a save shot, his job. <laughs> yeah, he might save his job because right now they both going to be fired. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying. You got to roll the dice. I'm just saying this is what he <laughs> may be thinking, like everybody's shit is on the line. Okay, so another little interesting story. So Steelers wide receiver George Pickens is being reviewed by the NFL for I Black saying open fucking always during the Cowboys game. It's being reviewed as a possible mm. violation of the league's uniform policy and the rule prohibiting players from wearing or displaying personal messages without prior approval. When asked about it, Mike Tomlin said, I don't know what message you're talking about regarding his eye black, but I didn't have any outlying issue with his effort. So Mike Tomlin said that he did not know that George Pickens had that on his face. So Mike, what did you think like of? <laughs> I don't like that. I'm not waiting for Mike. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Mason. I don't like that. Because see, this is setting up something, Mike. Right now it's cool. But then when somebody puts some races on their eyes, then we're going to be mad. So it's like you got to you got to protect that common ground because it'll turn into something crazy. And it's on you, Mike. And you know it'll get crazy because you know <laughs> the Negroes going to do it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we write all kind of messages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we gotta keep the main thing the main thing football and that's where man you'll have people write political messages everything <laughs> the nfl the nfl and, and i don't have an issue with that they're strict about those about the uniform they know that no one gets the eye gates more than the nfl does and they're not going to let you uh just basically prostitute their hard work for your own personal 
Carlton. And I ain't got no problem with that. I'm okay with them saying, no, we're not going to let y'all do this. We're not going to let you just write Oprah fucking always on your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this remind me of um in the NBA when they when people start wearing the NBA um headband upside down, it's like, bro, you can't mess the brand up now. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> you know, if we give us that inch, we gonna take a mile. We gonna run with that thing. So, so yeah, the NFL do. They're, they're right. If you just, why don't you just put open always? Why you had to drop that other word? <laughs> that's the whole. Yeah, I think that's a subliminal to his teammate. Um, I ain't have a problem with the shit. I He's dig. I dig where y'all coming from, and I understand it <laughs> because to me that you know hearing you guys. That's why I like hearing people's different point of view because that was a great point, Mike. Vote for Trump. Yeah. Vote for Kamala. All type yeah. of shit. <laughs> that that you have, that yeah, hundred percent right. I like that. But to me, me personally, my personal opinion is this is what happens, and they jacking my nigga Ryan Williams in Alabama. The nigga had killed everybody under his eye black at Alabama. 17 year old nigga wide receiver that's going crazy down there. After the game and I seen his eye black, I said, ooh, I like that. <laughs> 17, <laughs> I, thought it, I, I thought it was like, I actually posted on my page, I said, whoever raised this kid, applause. Cause his attitude was, yes, yeah, that's how I took <laughs> it when I seen him down there. And now all these messages, he was to me, he the first nigga I seen with the eye black and this shit said kill everybody. That's the, that was the week that they uh, actually beat Georgia. And he had a sensational game and then I seen this shit said kill everybody. I said, oh, now niggas talk about I'm always open. Where your mother at? Yeah. Dial 1 800 chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Where your mother at? Is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I get you guys' point of view, but I did really like when uh, Ryan Williams did that at Alabama. I'm not going to lie. What was the dude name that put Michael Vick up? On his um Graham, he used he put Michael Vick up after they beat the the Bulldogs. Oh, Ryan Clark. Oh yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, what what, what Ryan put up? What RC put up? Michael Vick for what? They beat the Bulldogs. Oh okay, yeah, where they were. Yeah. Um. RC. So actually, regarding the issue, like. I actually agree with Cam. I don't really have a problem with it, but I know that you can't go around regulating what every player writes up on their face because they would have. And I mean, Mike, you are right. You didn't have to put the F word, but it's just like, I know George Pickens has been a little irritated recently. So it's like, I understand it. But at the same time, yeah, like, I guess you can't do that. But it's like, dang, he can't express how he feels. But that's how I feel a little back and forth about it. But I understand, obviously, where the league's coming from. This is protocol, so... The NFL says you can express it, just not on the on, on the platform yeah. that we have built this high. Yeah. Don't express it on your social media, not on our platform, where we get billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. So you know, yeah, Mike, it's you can do it. Mike, it's three letters: protect the shield, right? That's what that's what it is, right? Mm. And, and they gonna protect that shield. They will protect that shield. And I understand if you give me 130 billion, I'm gonna protect it by all means necessary too. You see what I'm saying? Yep. If I was making their money. Yeah, got it. Well, that is actually all the time that we have for today. Mike, it was a pleasure to have you as always. My man Mike. <laughs> my man YSL Mike. I believe Mike. Carlton Mike Bank Banks. <laughs> 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 I like that. I like that. If the ladies like it, man, I dig it. I'm with that. And, and, and not so some of the edge. You know I'm a hard nigga from <laughs> yeah. No, no, I dig that. No, I dig that. You look safe. You safe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you walk in and, and you feel safe when you see Mike with that on. We appreciate you, Mike. Hey. They ain't gotta clutch their purse or clothes to roll up the windows when I walk by. They say, oh, hi, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Dapper Mike. They go, nigga alert. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mike. Mike is crazy. Wow, you're hilarious. <laughs> I'm in trouble, man. All right, Mike. Love. Okay.
Thank you all for watching. And as always, it is what it is. What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.